What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So I'm talking about Scream 6 in this video here again today. Going over some new details, teases, minor updates that Matt and Tyler Radio Silence have shared with us courtesy of some new interviews that have happened. One coming from the upcoming Total Film issue. The other coming from a Deadline site that I will leave a link to in the description if you want to read the full interview. Going over some of the tidbits that I thought were the most exciting to talk about as it pertains to the upcoming Scream 6 and Ghostface's debut in New York City. So... These are some of the deadline comments that was uh, asked from Matt and Tyler or asked to Matt and Tyler. So when asked about how important paranoia would be for the upcoming film, Matt Benton in the open said it's very important. This is exactly why we're so excited about the New York setting, because in such a big city, literally anyone could be Ghostface. In addition, the action also takes place on Halloween. Mask and disguises are are thus ubiquitous which will hopefully add to the feeling of paranoia so there you have the confirmation about the halloween setting from the director himself but how much of this movie is set on halloween i think is the question that many people will have going into the movie so going off of what we know and what we were able to assume and predict i'm going to predict it's just the opening sequence and everything that plays out up until the precinct scene with kirby then the rest of the movie will be over the span of two days or maybe even one day which is fine with me because it might add a little urgency to the story, but hopefully it doesn't impact much the much needed character development that I think is necessary for characters like Mindy, Chad, Tara. Since this is going to be their chance to kind of be more involved in the narrative, I hope that it doesn't like hold that back in any regard or make it seem too rushed in a way. So going off of some other things related to that. So in the opening, that's probably going to be set on Halloween night. The the Halloween party that many people assume is going to happen, the bodega attack, and then the sequence where Mindy is attacked probably will happen on Halloween night. And them going to the ghost face lair. That's probably going to all be on Halloween night. And of course, meeting up at the precinct. So Matt also had this to say about uh, Kirby's return. He said that it's not fan service. The original idea was to have Kirby appear in a cameo in Screen 5, which we knew that would have been fan service, but we didn't want that because it would have done the, it wouldn't it would have done the character an injustice. So we saved her return for Scream 6, in which she's a character on equal footing with everyone else. She has something to do in the film. See, these are the type of comments that make me feel good about how she's used. Kirby, we know, is in the FBI in the upcoming movie and will share scenes with the other survivors. Her and Mindy are going to interact briefly. Many people have wanted to see that. And Kirby herself is going to make a Friday the 13th reference uh despite her not being the main focus like many of us would prefer she will still be very important to this film and I think several people will be pleased with how she's utilized that's just my own personal opinion about what I know happens with Kirby in the upcoming movie also I'm glad they made these comments to kind of kill off the idea that Kirby was written in because Nev Campbell exited. That is not what happened. If anything, I would argue that Kirby was more planned to appear in this movie than Nev Campbell. There are reasons why I would argue that, but I am going to hold off and wait to see if they come out from Radio Silence themselves. Now, Matt also had this to say in the upcoming Total Film issue about Ghostface's brutality. He said that we wanted to make this really different while still having all the stuff you love. Having a bolder, more brazen Ghostface was a big part of that. I mean, shit, going off the trailer, we see that this killer has no problem stealing evidence from the past sprees, using shotguns or using a shotgun, taking advantage of Halloween night, similar to how Michael Myers would do, uh, having a whole entire shrine of this evidence and then using said evidence to commit the new sprees out of the age mask we've seen so much of, which probably belongs to either Billy or Stu. Uh, Tyler Gillette had this to say about the film's pacing. He said it, it moves really, it really moves like it's on rocket fuel. You sit down, it starts and the movie is just a ride. You get off two hours later and you feel like you haven't taken a breath. This starts and it just goes. So there aren't really these large pockets to talk about other movies. It of course has all the fun nods and meta commentary, but we really loved how accelerated this story is it felt like a reflection of how accelerated the process of making it was now i think this is something that might cause concern for some people but please remember not every fast-paced horror film is going to end up being a halloween kills if you're someone who thinks negatively about halloween kills i also want to point out that some of the negatives about halloween kills like some of the big issues came when it decided to bring in the legacy characters seemingly waste them with their inclusion 
cringy dialogue bits like what is it evil dies tonight <laughs> and a few other script issues that really messed it up it wasn't all down to its pacing not at all it wasn't all down to fast pacing it was what you were doing with the pacing and how of course there are several writing discrepancies people pointed out that they think you could have done a lot better or could have tweaked for improvements or just completely backtracking on things you made about or statements you made about michael myers by having him endure all this punishment at the end of the movie only to then turn around and continue to say that he's not supernatural which again by that point i cannot argue with you if you want to say that he's supernatural i get that they say he's not and i i believe them when they say that but you can't you're gonna lose your target audience with those statements when you have him survive stuff like that so i don't think we're gonna have to worry about things like that in scream six now being fast paced i have no issue with that my again concern might be coming down to the fact of how much character development is it going to be missed because of this because i do love those intimate moments with the characters that we got in the original trilogy we got some of that in screen four we got some of that in screen five those intimate those intimate moments like with sam and tara in the hospital and just seeing that bond be repaired in screen five i hope we can see some of that play out in scream six even though it might be a non-stop chase scene similar to sick i'm not going to be upset at that but i just hope we get to see the characters bond and interact with each other and just see their personality shine throughout all this mayhem and bloodshed kind of see what bonds have developed since the events of five how are they dealing with what happened in five etc if all of that can be woven into this fast-paced slasher who done it and as long as the meta commentary is at least just referencing other horror movies because at this point i would argue that there is a point in time where this franchise might run into a wall when it comes to commenting on current trends in horror i mean what are you going to commentate on now i think at this point we're going to be leaning more into social commentary by focusing on things like conspiracy theories uh true crime as as more as or not as much as maybe f talking about the the concept of a requel sequel or something like that not that those aren't a thing but i just don't think those are as popular as what Scream 5 was commentating on, which was the requels themselves, not their sequels. So we'll see what all happens in Scream 6 when it releases next month. Are you guys excited for Scream 6? Are you not excited for Scream 6? Do any of these new comments from these interviews from Matt and Tyler make you excited? If so, which bit are you most excited for? Which bit are you concerned about? Uh, if you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description i will have links to all my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video